Welcome, um, this is a video about using a React hook form. Um, it's based on a blog post that I did on Dev2. Uh, for about the first two minutes of this video, I'm going to just quickly go through creating a, um, an Ionic React application with uh, using the Ionic card. I'm going to have two fields in it, a title field and a body field. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because this isn't really what the um, what the blog post is about. The blog post is really about how to integrate React Hook form as a better way to manage um, your forms instead of using a bunch of um, uh, use use refs. Excuse me, um, a bunch of use states. Okay, um, if you want to jump ahead, I think at about the two fifty two or three minute mark is where I start to integrate React Hook form. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, already moving along here with creating my form. I have a simple uh, home page. My home page, we have your generic Ionic page, your Ionic header, Ion, Ion toolbar, your title, and then we jump into the content. As I said, I put everything into a um, Ion card. So we have the Ion card header um, and the Ion card content. And the Ion card content is where we really are going to focus a lot of our energy. I'm just going to duplicate the basic ion input that I have for the title, and then I'm going to repro I'm going to reproduce it and modify it, and we're going to create a uh, ion text area. Notice that I'm uh, providing a name for each one of the fields, uh, input fields, because the names are going to be required for us to integrate properly with React Hook form. So I have my fields working, my title and my body. Now let's add the buttons. So we need the buttons to respond to the events. We're gonna have an on. We're gonna have an ion button that's gonna handle the submit or the save of the form. We'll create a function called save click to support that. Let's add that now. As you can see, I'm using um, functional components for everything here. This is done in TypeScript because it's based on the default um, application template that you get when you create your Ionic app uh, using the Ionic CLI. <laughs> So we have our save and we have our cancel buttons that we have for our form. And I think we're about to get to the end of the form. Uh, let's add our save clicked and let's add our reset form. And I think this is about the end here. No, it was um, pop up an alert when you click the button to make sure that we have all that stuff functioning. Let's say we got a save, save click, reset form, form saved. Whoop. I think we're now ready to get to the good stuff with the uh, React hook form. Okay, here's a blog post that you can follow along on Dev2 if um, you want to see what we're doing. I'm really just going to move through the um, blog post and kind of cut and paste. But first, let's install React hook form, which is the uh, one npm library that we need to use. Notice I'm using npm here and not yarn. Okay, we have it installed. Next up, we are going to, you know, add the imports. As I said, I'm just moving along here following the blog post. I know sometimes people learn better from uh, a video. So I decided to give you video and uh, the blog post. So we've added the import. Now let's um, set up the initial values that we have for our form. We're going to use a title and a body. The initial forms you see will come in, sorry, the initial values will come in handy for when we're um, initializing React Hook form, but also when we want to reset the form uh, back to its empty values. So see here, we're going to load up uh, the use form. We set the default values by using the initial values that I created up top. And also what's cool about it is that it will help you with the IntelliSense later on when you're trying to access uh, the form values. Next we add our on submit. So React hook forms hooks into the submit on the form and uh, through the handle submit and then we'll actually call your function. It's intelligent enough to know not to execute the on submit if there's any errors that exist in the form which is pretty cool. So let's start our form. For a form we're going to wrap the pretty much the whole card well, pretty much the card content we're going to wrap in the form. Uh, notice we have a, we've switched our ion button from a click to a submit so that it knows as the standard response 
uh, to the click is the call to submit handler and the submit handler is on the top of the form which we've added the on submit okay we have everything in place we have our on submit function it uh, looks like i have two of these guys in here let's delete one of them we only need one for now we're just going to have the on submit render the um results in json okay now let's start to add our controls if you read the blog post you notice that i use the um a a, a controller wrapping around all the ion inputs it's the you can kind of jump around and try to use it not to use it i strongly suggest you just start out wrapping everything with the controller um it handles the errors better it handles the events better just start out with it so what you can do is excuse me as you see you just define the controller um and then you identify the and a controller that you're wrapping in the as um you put the control control on the interesting thing you need to make sure you do is the ion change event is what you want to listen for so you see i have the on change name it tells the react hook form to listen for the ion change event and on that make the change since the behavior is pretty much the same we're just duplicating that controller we'll make a minor change to uh, let us know that the first one was for the ion input and the next one for the ion text area we'll go in we'll update the names we will change the rules they both are required but one we we're going to require it be 10 characters long and one we're going to require it be four characters long now they're all wrapped let's format the document and save this thing see what we got um, as you know on these on any change uh, to state the components we rendered um, react hook form will create this error object and populate it uh, on every render so we're going to log it so as you can see when i save because my fields are required this error objects generated it's required for each one of the fields to indicate it next time if i enter something you see i get a different error message it's logging out for the it's looking for the minimum characters that, that should be required so it's pretty cool how you just get all that function out of the box but what we're going to do here is we're going to add a function that will take the key which is the name of the field and render the appropriate error message for you let's create that message now i mean excuse me let me create let, uh, let's create that function now render error message we're going to pass in a key which will let us know what field we're looking for and then what we will do is we will look on the error object based on the key and we'll pull the specific um map entry because it really is a map we'll pull a specific map entry off we'll get the errors and then from that error we'll identify the message the interesting thing is that on required if the field is required we get no error message so we'll just send a default error message back but on the minimum and the maximum um, when we're checking for the length we have defined an error message so we'll use that error message so as you can see here i know i have an error because i'm in here um, if I excuse me if I have an error message then we're going to return a span that has the information um, about the error we're going to try to put some styling and stuff on it here so I got the fat fingers can't seem to type anything right so if error is a message get this right Gotta get my HTML characters wrapped around here correctly to get this working properly. So, okay. If I have an error message, then give me the message. So that'll happen um, when there's a length problem. And if I don't, then we're just gonna dump that it's a required field out. Looks like I have all my brackets and everything set up properly now. So let's format this and see what we get. Okay. I save, I get my error message. I think it's a required field, then I get the appropriate message for the length. But for some reason the body error message is not getting rendered properly. So let's put it down here to get the 
message. And then let's set the key to be body. And let's try again. Save. All right, that's a little ugly. Let's clean this up and move these uh, these error messages around properly. Put the buttons in a separate div. Kind of clean that up. Well, uh, let's see. All right, now we get the required field. But oh, I gotta fix that. There we go. Body. Now let's see what we get. That's required field. Four characters. Required field. Now we get the proper length seems to be what we're looking for and we get the message on the back uh, and the last thing is here let's use the reset that you get from react hook to properly um, clear out the content of the form there's a lot more stuff you can do here there's ways to check the form state to disable the submit button um, and a lot of other uh, interesting um, form uh, functionality that you get out of the box with this um, I highly recommend using this uh, library. Um, you start to have any sort of complex forms, having a bunch of use states and trying to manage these objects, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Um, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a look at the blog. I just kind of quickly went through this. The blog post goes into a lot more detail. Like I said, the video is really for those people that enjoy the video. And um, please link like subscribe and reshare and leave a comment if there's anything else interesting that you'd like to see thanks a lot and i will talk to you later